when I uh, ask God to pour his love over Archie and fill him up and, you know, just help make him feel better and, peace, you know, and then I ask God to do that for me. And then I was praying in tongues. So, and then I continued to pray, but I didn't know what I was praying. I just let God pray. And God um, obviously had me praying for joy over Archie. And he looked up at me and smiled and giggled, but not in a like a overexcited way. It was still peaceful. And then he started drifting off to sleep. So where I felt like completely like this is it. I'm, how long is this going to go? Another two hours, whatever. I'm exhausted. It's, it's like midnight at this point. God was able to just bring peace and love and just Amen. put him to sleep. Amen. All right. So a couple more people. I know Novi's got so many stories, so maybe she could just give a couple from... Or, yep. And Yosh. Either one of the two of you. Yeah, you can come up. I just, um, from yesterday invitation, we, um, we got so many, but the, um, we met a, two Aboriginal ladies walking down the street, and so I just talked to them, and one of them stopped, one of them ran away, but just asking, invited her to come here, <laughs> um, and I asked her, how are you going, and she said, oh, I'm living in darkness, so I just asked um, if I can pray for you, and say, oh, yeah, yes, please, so pray the first time. And then after that, she said, can you pray again? I need, I need this dark thing to stop following me, she said. And, and I said, well, how, do you know Jesus? And she said, she knew Jesus a long time ago, but she has walked away. And I said to her, for you to have this stop following you, you need to invite Jesus back into your life, recommit yourself to the Lord. So she then said, yeah, I want that. I want that now. So... We prayed with her, she, she repeated the prayers, and she renounces, she renounced all the sin, all the stuff. And so, yeah, she recommitted her life to the Lord, Amen. and she wanted us to pray for the other lady. It actually happened to know PC, but yeah, that was just one of them. Praise That's the so Lord. good. So good. You let me. Is there anybody else that has experienced something recently that they want to go, yep, has been the breakthrough? Yeah, Crystal, I see you bursting. You want to say something? Come up here. <laughs> So for those who don't know me, I'm Crystal. I recently just moved from Anjumup, that like my Christian family down there, my family forever. Um, I moved up to Perth to look after my dad, which has just passed. I'm not going to cry because the Lord's strengthened me now. And then I got news the other day, about two days ago, that my, I had to terminate my home. And then I was just like, oh... Not again, like he's trying to bring me down again. Then I was just like, Lord, I'm just going to give this all to you. Then two, what, yesterday, the day before yesterday, I got a text on the phone, they've got a property for me and my kids. Amen. And then I was just like, hallelujah. I was just like so excited. I was just like, oh, thank you, Lord. And just praise, like, you know, singing. Like, and then, um, yeah, so I was just like, the battles with him is just yeah. continuously with me. Being a Noongar as well, you know. We have battles every day. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> but I'm not going to let him win. Mm. Come on. Lord's got it, you know. Yeah. Amen. 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 So I'm just going to get everybody to stand again. I know it's a little bit of aerobics, but I'm going to get you all to stand. Because what we've heard in just these few beautiful testimonies. So we've got healing. We've got peace. We've got answered prayers in amongst when we don't see it. Evidence in amongst that we don't see it. And we have salvation. We all have family members, friends, or ourselves that have walked away. And God is there, and God sees, and God brings His children home. So whatever you're facing, whether you need peace, whether you need healing, whether you need salvation, or family or friend needs salvation, or whether you need a breakthrough, whether you need an answer to prayer, the evidence is all around. You go outside and you just look anywhere. And it's so funny how we can just live in our lives and just this mundane life sometimes and we don't see God, but He's in everything that, that we do. He's everything that we look around. So close your eyes and just picture whatever circumstance you were picturing while Pete was singing the battle. 
and we just we're just gonna sing in the background while we're just praying this prayer but thank you father we just thank you god right now lord that you are our hope you are our future you are our peace you're our love and you loved us that much that you sent jesus your only begotten son to die on the cross for us that we never have to experience, we never have to experience that cut off from you. We never have to. You've made a way for us. You've made a way for us to have peace. You've made a way for us to not feel alone. You've made a way for us to have breakthroughs. You've made a way for us to be healed. You've made a way for us, Father, that in whatever circumstance that we are facing, that we can give thanks because you are our future. Eternity with you is our future. So we just thank you right now for whatever circumstance people are facing, Father. May they give that to you. The battle is yours, Father. It's not for us to carry. It's not for us to take. We have heard these breakthroughs this morning, and we thank you for breakthrough in every single individual's lives that are here this morning, that are watching this morning, that will watch whatever's going on this morning. We thank you for breakthroughs in every single life. May you show yourself real, Father. May you encounter the hearts of these people, Father, because they're your children and you love them, Father. May you bring your children home, God. In your name, amen. going to do our tithe and our offering. For those of you who don't know what tithe and offering is, we believe as a church that we give our 10% of what we earn. It's our first. It's not about the 10%. It's about the first. God gave his first. We give our first. We give it unto him out of obedience, out of the fact that he is the first love in our lives. We want him to be the first love in our lives. If we don't know what that looks like, Come and see us. Come and speak to us. You don't journey this alone. You don't have to journey this alone. Come and talk to somebody. If you want to know what that means, what that means that I want to put God as my first love in my life. So as we're going to take up the tithe and offering, and the offering just goes, you know, I want to give this to you because you've placed this in my heart. It's between you and God. In everything you do, do with thanksgiving. In everything you do, do with a cheerful heart because of the love that God has for you. So we just thank you as the ushers come forward. Thank you, God. We thank you, Father. We put you first, God. We thank you, Lord, that everything that we are going through, you already see it. You already know it. You've already taken it, Father. And we just give you thanks, God, with our lives, with our whole lives, whether that be financial, physical, however that looks, Father, we give our whole lives to you first, Father. And we just thank you. And you bless the hands that give this morning, whether that be electronically or in, in hand, Father. We just thank you that you bless these people, Father. We thank you that you multiply this, God, to go over and above and beyond what we can even comprehend that this could do, Father, out into this community and beyond this community, Father. We thank you for multiplication and provision over this church and over the lives and the individuals of this church and families, God. In your name, amen. I don't know if that was a good thing or a bad thing because I could get laughed at if I'm being an Elton. But anyway, no, I probably won't. So online devotions. Welcome to C3 Langford, everybody. Is anybody here for the first time? You get a little welcome pack. Yes, first time, first time, first time, first time. Molly. Welcome. What are your names? Devin? Catherine? Jeffrey, all right. <laughs> Welcome to C3 Langford, everybody. When you get a chance, just say hello. Make everybody feel welcome here. This is the house of God, but it's also our family. It's also our home. Online devotion start tomorrow, 6.30 p.m. p.m. Monday.
Monday and Thursday for two weeks. Who's on tomorrow? Neil. So let's tune in at 6.30. If you don't know how to, go on Facebook, like C3 Langford on Facebook, and then it comes up live as soon as someone is on. So tomorrow it starts 6.30 p.m. Love Langford, we are back on Tuesday. Yeah. And we have carbonara and fruit salad. Why we are on that note, I don't know if everybody's on Facebook. I don't know if everybody's who's not on Facebook, but... Who voted? Yeah! Yeah! Go for it, Deanna! <laughs> Mum, you should stand. Yeah! Anita Christini, our Westfield local hero, everybody! Yeah! She's blushing. <laughs> but we want to thank everybody who voted. We want to thank the team that does everything on Tuesday nights for Love Langford to make this possible for six years, going on to our seventh year. And as everybody knows, even through COVID when we had to stop, Mum did not stop. She continued cooking and she continued delivering this food. So we want to say you are well deserved as the Westfield local hero. You're our hero. You're always my hero. Now you're everyone's local hero. Be proud of that because you've done amazing. Team has done amazing. This church does amazing. For a small church to reach out the way that they do is phenomenal. And it's only God. It's you guys, but it's only God that this church that's not that big can reach out to so many people in the community and continue to do that and be doing it for almost seven years. And nothing stopped Nothing stopped anyone from continuing to deliver food, to care for people. So not even COVID could stop this church from doing that. So give yourselves a hand. <laughs> baptism picnic. For it to be a baptism picnic, we need baptisms. Right. <laughs> so if you have not been baptised, I'm not looking at no one. But <laughs> if you have not been baptised, please see Pastor Clinton. So we can have a baptism picnic, not just a picnic. Either way, we're going to have a picnic. We're going down to Woodman Point. I think the address is the address up there. No, if you need the address, come and see me. I have it. Otherwise, next week we'll put it up. So on the 31st of October, we are not having service here. We are not having service here. So not next week, the week after. We are not having service here. We are having service at Woodman Point. We are going to do a picnic and a baptism and we are going to provide like a light breakfast brunch type thing and we are going to enjoy each other's company, do fellowship at the beach, bring your own picnic blankets and chairs and stuff like that. But it's at Woodman Point. I can't even say the street otherwise I would, but it's Nine Rebup Circuit Coogee. So it's Coogee. So anyway, 10 a.m. If you need a lift, please see Pastor Clinton or one of us leaders. But if you need a lift, you meet here at 9.15 for a 9.30 sharp leaving. So please let us know if you need a lift and you'll meet here and meet us down there. Otherwise, 10 o'clock down at Woodman Point. All right, I have some announcements on my hands that did not go up there. Coffee volunteers, that one's up there. We want to start our coffee again. Who remembers when we had really nice brewed coffee? Yes, on the machine, not just instant. It's instant, it's called coffee snobs, otherwise everybody else has instant. But we do have some coffee snobs in here and enjoy some really good coffee. So we can't do that without coffee makers. And in doing that, you actually learn how to be a barista and you can go get a job somewhere. So it's like a win-win situation, it's job training. So it has happened. So if you want to learn how to make coffee, where is Paula? Is she here? She's in the other room. Okay, but see Paula or you can see me if you want to learn how to do coffee and we will get you training and then we will start doing the coffee every Sunday morning again. That'll be exciting. All right, women's. Who has not got an invitation to the women's on the 27th of November? You got someone less today on Facebook. On the case, okay, so the 27th of November. If you are on Facebook, please get in contact with Sky because Sky is our women's leader. Sky runs it all. And what she is doing and on the 27th of November is going to be phenomenal. We all can see what's going on around the world. We all had a prayer for Afghanistan. We can all see what's happening. And sometimes when the media stops something, we go, oh, what happened? 
this is still going on. If we're not someone who goes along and, and Googles it and tries to find out what is actually going on or don't have any connections, we can go on with our lives and just go, oh, well, that's sort of over. It's not really in the media anymore. It's like South Africa. When that was going on, I'm like, what are the shops doing now? So you don't see it on media. So when we don't see stuff on media, sometimes we can turn a blind eye. But not Sky. Sky has been doing some research. No, it's amazing. And we're going to have a worship and prayer night and we're going to fundraise for, where is it called? Oh, morning. Who doesn't love praise and worship in the morning? Baptist. Baptist World Aid in Afghanistan. So we're going to have a fundraiser. But it's not just about giving your money. It's not just about that. We're coming together as women. Women are strong. And women... When they come together and do something, they can conquer a lot of things. So we're coming together as women to pray. We're coming together to, as women to worship. And that's what we're doing. We're going to come together and fundraise for very much needed causes that are out there, which we're privileged not to have to go through, but it's still happening. So as women, we need to rise up and go, we're going to come together and we're going to pray and we're going to worship. So if you are not on Facebook... Come and see Sky. It's on the 27th of November between 9 and 10 a.m. here at the church. Yep, see Sky. Yes, we are amazing as women together. Carpet. Who knows we're changing our carpet? Yes, we have been fundraising for carpet for a while. And then we also got donations to be able to let that happen. And we did a walk at the beginning of the year. And some people might have thought we forgot that we're meant to be changing the carpet, but we haven't. And we have just had a phone call that the carpet's able to be changed on the 1st of November. But, I know it's amazing, amazing, amazing. This place is going to be transformed. But we need help prior to that to rip up this carpet. So, if you can help, we, do we have a day or the weekend before? Yeah, but we need to rip it up before. The weekend before the 1st of November which is next weekend, the baptism weekend we're going to do. Right. The week before that. So if you can come in the week before that, which is around the 26th, 23rd, 27th, you know, that area, that week, if you can spend any time coming in and ripping up this carpet, please see Pastor Clinton and let him know that you can make it and we will work around and try and get a group together. Rip up this carpet. Have new carpet on the 1st of November. I have been speaking for so long. I'm going to hand over to Pastor Clinton. Come on. Wow. We just got our announcements preached to us. That was awesome. So just where you are right now, I want you to sit in your seat. Uh, Pete's going to lead this song over us. Um, is it the battle of that song? Or part, of, part of the song. But here's what I'm going to need you to do. Um, Pete spoke about us positioning ourselves. And in that position, then God moves and acts. So this is the position I want you to take. Our initial time we sang it, we sang it over the battle that was ours, that we were facing. But now I want you to sing that over, like, a bit like Paul and Silas. They were in a prison cell and they just worshipped God where they were at. But I want you to see that there may be people around you. Could be family, could be people at work, could be whoever you know. We're going to just declare this over them. Come on. Some of them need to come from the darkness into light. Some of them need healing. Some of them are facing significant issues. Come on. I wonder if we can get the lyrics up there. But I just want you to declare it. Don't you? Yeah, you're going to sit down. You're going to sit down. Come on. Position yourself right now in God. Come on. Some of our kids are struggling. People are struggling with different issues, health issues, mental health issues, fears, anxieties, whatever that is. Come on, some people have lost loved ones. And they're struggling in grief right now. They're journeying through grief. So we're just declaring that over them right now. God's with you. It's going to be okay. He's going to walk with you right through it all in the name of Jesus. Yeah, yeah, come on. Declare that. 
that God is the God of victory, is the God of power. He knows. This peace right now just flood your heart and your mind. in the fight empowering presence Father we want to say thank you that you're the God that fights for us and that you're the God that Lord God is able to deliver your hand is not too short that you cannot save your, your ear not deaf that you cannot hear so thank you for victory Thank you for your anointing. Thank you for your power. Thank you for the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead that lives on the inside of us. And that power that, Lord God, is released in us and then through us as well. Thank you for the blood of Jesus Christ. Thank you for the cross of, of, of Christ. Thank you for his burial and his, his, de well, his death first and then his burial and then his resurrection. Thank you for resurrection life. Thank you, Father God, that we are not uh, our own, but we belong to you. We've been bought with the precious price of the blood of Jesus Christ. And so, Father God, we're not living for ourselves, but we live for you. Everything that we have is yours. Everything that we are is you, who you've made us to be. Thank you that your image is being formed in us, Lord God. Thank you for the power of the blood of Jesus Christ, that, Lord God, overcomes every spiritual opposition assignment against your people. And your word, God, that is released over your people, that, Lord, will sever the ties of every generational curse, every generational spirit, every spirit that we've opened our lives unknowingly, knowingly to, and every stronghold that has been built. Thank you for the power of God that will come and break through every and set free every person. And then, Father God, thank you for that, that, that sense of peace and knowingness. As your word says in Revelation, that they love not their lives unto death. Thank you that there's no fear in death anymore. There's no fear in, in that where, where we're going. There's no fear in believing you and trusting you amidst everything that would come against our lives. Thank you for your peace. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your power. Thank you for your spirit. Thank you for your name. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your joy. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy today. We bless you in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen and amen. Come on, let's give the Lord a great big hand. Thank you, team. Oh, come on, let's give the Lord a really great, come on. I know you're like, oh, I'm tired. Like, can the service end? Uh, the worship time, no. But clapping in, in Scripture is actually warfare. It's a setting agreement with. So it's not a hype thing. It's not me going, come on, clap so we, oh, I can feel better. No, no, no. It's actually going, we're agreeing in warfare. We're agreeing. We're setting agreement. Amen. Yeah. Come on. What a great testimony. What great testimonies. How good is that? Oh, Pete, that's that is so exciting. I think we're going to be, church, just get ready. Well, not get ready. You're in it. <laughs> so um, we're going to see more signs, wonders, miracles. Yeah, yeah. People on the street literally being set free from shadows and darkness. Yeah, that happened yesterday. That's not just hypothetical. Literally happened yesterday. People giving their lives to Christ on the street, in their doorways. Come on. People asking for prayer for mental health because they're struggling uh, with their kids facing that. And it's not for us to assess, oh, so what happened? No, no, no. It's just you pray. Speak it and see how God changes things. All right, we're doing our, our garlic series. Um, so many things happening, isn't it? Isn't it awesome? All right, so we've got a lot to get through today. This is training day. So if you're visiting with us, God bless you. Thank you so much. Great to meet you. We'd love to have a coffee with those, especially people visiting with us today. Thanks so much for coming. Um, and uh, we're going to just take some time around the Word of God right now. So if you have your Bible, 
uh, Colossians chapter 1. Normally I have a really big intro story and stuff like that, like cooking garlic prawns last week. Sorry for those who missed out on garlic prawns. Uh, it was amazing. So we're going to have a uh, lot less ac- activities um, and a lot more just around the Word of God. So I wanted, I've, I started making this last night. Uh, this is, it will be when it's done, uh, fermented honey garlic. And so this is apparently I've got to do this, turn it over a couple of times a day, and then I've got to burp it because there's a buildup of <laughs> gases in there, um, and so that uh, I'll do it after church. I don't think I need to burp it right now. It's still a bit early in the piece. So apparently great for the immune system. So little little fact little fact figures around garlic. Well, it's a strong-scented vegetable. We all know that. Uh, it flavors food. Yes, we all love that. Some people believe it scares the boogeyman away. I'm not sure about that. But in ancient times, garlic was celebrated as a source of strength. Olympians ate garlic before competing. So any of you Jimmy, Jimmy people going to the gyms, uh, grab some garlic. Roman soldiers ate it before they went to battle. Uh, so this is some of the history of garlic. Builders of the Egyptian pyramids, uh, which majority would have been the Israelites, lived on bread and garlic. Did you know that? During World War II, fun fact, not a fun fact, it was a horrible fact, but during World War II, uh, when penicillin was scarce, garlic paste was applied to wounds to prevent perfection, uh, infection, perfection, <laughs> to prevent infection. Garlic doesn't help you speaking out in front of people. Uh, and garlic is a superfood. Garlic, apparently, I'm, I'm doing a little study right now. Well, I'm not doing a study. I've read some stuff. You know, Dr. Google or whatever that is. Um, that uh, garlic and baldness. Yeah. So if you see me with honey garlic on my head, I'm hoping that something's <laughs> going to grow. But this is a great immune booster. So if you've got a low immune system, uh, this has got to be uh, fermented for 30 days, I think it is. And then you can start chewing down on it. So it's awesome. And it doesn't taste like garlic. It's, it, the, the honey takes that whole burning sensation away. And it tastes really good. And then if you wanted to, you could add apple cider vinegar to it a little bit. Because it's all like gooey and sticky right now. But that'll be like a liquid, like water. Not water as in the clearness of it, but the fluidity of it. So yeah. And then, exactly. Thank you for asking. So... You know when you bruise garlic, uh, so when you smash it with a knife and then you peel it, 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 pre- it releases an enzyme called allicin. Yeah. And allicin is the thing that's really good for you. So when you cook it, you burn, that sort of takes the allicin away. Uh, A-L-L-I-C-I-N, allicin. And, uh, but when you eat it raw, that's the real juice. That's the real good stuff for you. So make sure, if you're eating garlic this week, just let people know. Anyway, I noticed everyone writing something down there. That was great. Yeah, thanks for nothing. Welcome to online. (laughs) Welcome online. Great to have you. Colossians 1. We're going to read 9 to 20. We started this last, uh, finished at the end of last week. I just wanted to finish this in today. Today we're going to be talking about baptism. Uh, And I want to talk about the baptisms in Scripture. Uh, We're not going to get into much of the Holy Spirit, but we're going to mainly focus on the water baptism. And um, it's been actually really insightful for me. Last week, for those that are visiting, uh, we talked about planting garlic. And we talked about, um, in my ability, which is not very good, um, I thought you would just plant the whole clove of garlic like that. But that doesn't leave room for it to grow and it's not good for it. So what you have to do is break them up into these individual cloves and plant it with the hard piece down. You can soak that in a bit of water, in fact, for a little bit. It it's prop- uh, helps the roots uh, stimulate. And then you plant it about an inch or so down and then cover it over. Or you can plant it with a little bit of the, the top showing. So however you plant it, you've got to plant it the right way. And we spoke about our belief systems being a place that we need to actually understand as Christians what it is that we actually believe. Because we have a mental ascent towards God in what, how we believe Him. 
But the reality of it is our believing really, really matters. So I'm not going to go too much into that because of the lateness of this morning. I really would like you to investigate that by going online and watching that online, uh, our last week's sermon. So this week, we just wanted to get back to the point of going, hey, listen, understand when it comes to baptism, for most of us, we know that we go, we get dunked in water. For some of us, it's been a christening when we were kids. But when we talk about Christian baptism, we talk about full immersion in water. That's why we're going down to the beach. Uh, when you read in Acts, uh, Philip and the eunuch, uh, they actually went down into the water and were baptized. Normally, we have like a little tub here and we baptize people. Uh, but today's training day because my hope is that after today, that's why I need you to make notes, right? Uh, however you do, because I know you won't retain all the scriptures I'm about to give you to read. My ho- what, we, what we are believing here as a church is that if we can equip each and every one of us to be able to be the church rather than just attend church, that when you lead someone to faith, you can baptize them straight away. So then I'm, I'm, it's not either or, like we're never going to have another baptism service. We'll continue to have baptism services. But hey, listen, I'd love, for you to, I'd love to hear the report like we had Lisa lead us this morning going, hey, listen, this week my friend gave their life to Christ and we, we went down to the, the pool or whatever and I baptized her. Awesome. And then you're able to unpack that for them. So we're going to just do that. So training day, we're good to go? All right, Colossians 1.9. I said that about 10 times and we never got there. Here we go. For this reason, since the day we heard about you, uh, this is Paul the Apostle speaking to the church in, uh, in Coloss- or Colossi, a Colossian church. And there were so many different um, aspects of faith coming out and there was a lot of confusion around. And he's just reminding them about who they are in Christ. And so he says, for this reason, since the day that we heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you. And I'm not, trying not to preach this because, uh, so this prayer there, and asking God that he would fill you with the knowledge of his will. And this is my prayer that I pray over you so that you're aware. This is, uh, uh, that he may fill you with the knowledge of his will through, the spir- through spiritual wisdom and understanding. And we pray that in order that you may live a life worthy of the Lord, that you may please him in every way. Amen. I love that, that we can please God in every part of our lives. Isn't that awesome? Great. Thanks for the two there. Bearing fruit in every good, bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God. We're fruit bearers. We're good work, good fruit bearers. We are good works that that'll actually change people's lives. Like we were talking about Anita this morning and just recognizing that. Anita's not Anita knows enough to not get a big head about all of that. She understands the reason and the purpose about why God has gifted her to be able to cook. And then through COVID was able to bless a lot of families, people that were struggling. I'm telling you, there were people that were going through, going through cancer and different things and couldn't cook. And we had the the mummering of a gent in our community, just thanking us for the, for the food that we want. But it wasn't just about delivering the food. It was the conversations we were having with them when we dropped the food off made a difference when you're alone and you're suffering cancer. You know, it's only you and your little son. Anyway, moving right along. So good works is good works. Amen? <laughs> Growing in the knowledge of God. Being strengthened with all power. Oh, that's amazing, isn't it? According to his glorious might. So I said I wouldn't preach it. So that you may have great endurance and patience. These are the things that none of us want. Great endurance and patience. Come on, that you in your life. Great endurance in your marriage and you're not giving up. Great endurance in your relationships that you're not just quitting on them and that you're not just giving up on people. And great endurance in your workplace when things are getting a bit tough. And patience. Ah, endurance and patience. And joyfully, uh, and joyfully, and, uh, and joyfully giving thanks to the Father. Wow. Hey, next month, oh, I can, you do, keep doing this. Next month is a Thanksgiving month. It's going to be amazing. Um, who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints. What? Giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you. Giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the kingdom of light. We don't need to preach that. Giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you. Just close your eyes for a moment. I want to speak to every voice that comes against you that says you're not good enough, that you don't know enough, you're not smart enough, you're not nice enough, you're not beautiful enough, you're not whatever. I want you to understand where you are positioned. 
and where your qualification comes from. Giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the kingdom of light. Father, I pray for every dark shadow over every mind, every intense thought that drives people into a darkness, a lowness, a depression. Right now, in the name of Jesus, that is not who we are. That is not what Jesus saved us into. And so, Father, or from, I just declare right now, and we release the authority that you've given us by your word in the name of Jesus. Darkness, lift off in Jesus' name. Every dark thought, every suicidal thought, every negative thought, every broken-hearted thought, every broken-hearted abuse thought that life has happened to you, I break the power of that in the name of Jesus. You are qualified to an inheritance in the kingdom of light. That's the kingdom of God. I set you free from the bondage of that in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness. Oh, there it is. Um, And brought us into the kingdom of light. Of the son he loves. So we come into that love relationship, folks. We're included in that love. Isn't that amazing? In whom we have redemption. We have been redeemed, bought back, bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. That's your identity right there. You were paid. You were so valuable to God that he paid with you. You and I were so valuable to him that he paid with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. So when you are talking to people and you are wanting to explain to them how the journey of, of, of them coming into faith and coming into this relationship with God, this is a great little scripture for you to break down and, and to do that. That he's not only he's rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of light, the kingdom of, of his son, of the son he loves, in whom we have redemption. I am redeemed. Remember that song? I am redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Oh, no one. Oh, way too old. I am redeemed. Anyway. Um, so we're redeemed. And I know I am. I am redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Safe from sin. I know I am. And my sins are taken away. Praise the Lord. Something like that. Pete, I reckon let's pull that into the next week's. No, we won't. But we are redeemed, though, into the kingdom of the Son He loves, in whom we have redemption and the forgiveness of sins. Wow. That just lets us know we are saved into relationship with God and sin. And I know this is old school for you guys, and it's a little bit like familiarity, churches. Yeah, I'm saved from sin, but my goodness, sin was separating us from God. Sin kept us in a, in a trajectory that was going to be total separation from God and ending up in an eternity away from Him. But thank you. God and thank Jesus that he says, no, I'm going to pay a price for them. And it's the, son, it's the price of my son and I'm buying them back. He's bought each and every one of us back into that place of being in relationship with him. You're valuable. Turn to your neighbor and tell him a high five of them and tell them they're valuable. Babe, can I grab my water there? Did I bring my water up? I don't know what I did with my glass. All right. All right. Seriously, guys, that was the lamest high fives I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> I don't know what I do with my glass, babe. Sorry. Ah, oh, there it is. Yeah, there it is. Uh, sorry, I've got my wife on injured duties. Thank you, babe. No, just, that's okay. Yeah. Oh, I'll leave it there. Thanks. That's my lovely wife, ladies and gentlemen, for those online. <laughs> All right. So we know that up until uh, verse 14, that's what we saved into or saved from. Redeemed. All right, saved into. Let's go 15. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. Now, he's, now there's, it's stepping into a, the next level going, hey, listen, we saved you from darkness into light. We redeemed you. We bought you. We did all of this amazing stuff for you. And this is now your next. This is what life looks like next for you. So we can all, you know, live at the point of I'm redeemed. I'm bought by the blood of Jesus. It's great. And we do that as, a, as, as church. But then... I think what God wants to do, and it's, and it's going to be regards to our baptism uh, talk today, is that He actually wants to reveal to you that there's something more. I am blown away that this little single clove of garlic will turn into a bulb underground during its growing season. So one turns into a whole lot. 
So I'm telling you, our belief in God and being planted in the right way and understanding who we are in Him, what it's going to do is going to produce this Christian life, this bulb of Christian life, this bulb and this source of, of nutrients uh, that's going to actually cause us to be productive and fruitful in the name of Jesus. And so now in Colossians, he's saying, hey, listen, guys, there's a lot of confusion. There's a lot of different doctrines going around, but this is who you are. You've been saved and redeemed by Jesus Christ through God, by God, sorry, th- uh, through Jesus Christ. And this is now your next level. This is where you're going to live. Are you ready for it? Grab someone's hand next to you and just hold tight and go, are you ready? He is the image of the invisible God. Okay, here's some controversy, right? Maybe heresy. I don't think it's heresy. But God didn't come to just save you from your sin to get you to heaven. It's one. It's, it's a, there's an and. He saved you. He gave his life for you to bring you out of sin and darkness and into light. But he also came to bring his image, to restore the image that he placed in how he created you. You're designed with the image of God on the inside of you. So every time, I'm seriously, when the spirit of uh, inferiority and I'm not good enough comes, because it's accusing you, please don't entertain it. It's like you inviting a robber into your home and go, yeah, no, have a go. Just take whatever you want to do. And then, and then what we do is then we go and find the people that really understand our jam. And then they console us in that. That's not helping. That's enabling you to stay in a place and in a prison and in a trap of the enemy. They don't have that answer. If you're a person that someone comes to and goes, I just want you to, uh, I'm feeling this, hear them, but then remind them who they are because that's what Paul is doing to the church right here. He's just going, oh, there's so many different doctrines. Oh, yeah, no, I get it. Life's really tough. Oh, okay, yep. No, 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 He's, 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 he's acknowledging it, but he's addressing it through who Jesus Christ is, what Jesus Christ has done. In church, that is going to be the most transformational thing that we can. Because, oh, I just want, you know, save me from my sins so I can get into heaven. God's going, yeah, great. But I'm actually saving you so that I can get heaven into you. I want to restore your image. That when we created you, when let's make man in our own image. God wants to restore our image to you. So in our Christianity, what will grow is when we plan ourselves the right way. I'm understanding that, yes, I'm saved from sin, but I'm also being restored into the image of Christ. It's no longer I who lives, but Christ that lives in me. That causes me to live a totally different way. Causes me to live in a level of authority and anointing and power. And it's not all about signs and wonders, people, although they will happen as a result of, but it's you understanding who you are in Christ. I'm telling you, we are no different today than what the church in Colossae, the Colossian church was. So many doctrines, so many different thoughts. And right, like right now, if you needle or no needle, whatever, whatever. And then there's all there's, there's stuff that we have around it in order to have, and there's so many different doctrines about everything from gender through the whole lot, marriage, the whole lot. There's so many different things. What is it that you know? What is it that you know about God for you? What is it that you know about his image? What is it that you know about what he's purchased? What is it that you know that he, the life that he wants you to live? Oh, today's not a very good day. Today's a great day, but we're not going to, there's too much more for us to go. Okay, 16, for by him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers. This is, okay, this is your next. This is where you're coming into. Understand that this is not just about the natural anymore. It's about the supernatural. So he's created all these things, heaven and earth, invisible and invisible, whether thrones or powers, rulers or authorities, all things were created by him and for him. So you're created by him and for him. How does that make you see yourself? How does that make you live? How does that make you do church? Because we don't do church. We don't attend church. We are the church. We are God's people. We are God's chosen. We are God's best answer to the world today for bringing salvation in. So we're just not about coming to church. I didn't like the song service. Pastor Clint went on for so long. It's not about that. 
It's about understanding that we are the church. So wherever you go, that's where the church is. Isn't that cool? And the Bible says in Ephesians, this is not my message, but here we go. In Ephesians, it says this, it's the role of the church to declare the manifold wisdom of God. What? To principalities and powers and rulers and authorities. Come on, there's an authority on the inside of you, but maybe you just don't know it because maybe you've been planted upside down or wrong, or maybe you just haven't been planted yet. Because, yeah, I've come to faith and I've come to God, but then you get so caught up in all this stuff that's really surface and you never really get planted in Him and you never really get planted in what He says about you. You only believe the stuff that you know that's going to get you into that, because I lifted my hand at one point, but then I believe everything that's contrary to what the Word of God says about me in this season. Good and bad, ugly, whatever that looks like. And God is just saying, come on, no, no, I need you to actually... Uh, let's grow up into a level of maturity. All right. Verse 17. He's before all things. And in him all things hold together. Boy. Ever felt that your life was just unraveling? Ever felt that the church was just unraveling? Ever felt that, like, oh, it's just getting too hard. I don't know if I want to keep doing this. I think I might just quit. Ever been in a place of unraveling? My hand is up first and foremost. But if that's, all I, if that's where I stay, if that's where I believe, by, by the way, I don't feel that about our church. I'm just letting you know. I did, at points, did, did feel that. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. So if he's before all things, and I know he's talking about when he existed, but in my life, when I'm facing something in my life, I go, you were here before me. So I can follow you in this. I can follow you. Don't know the outcome yet. Can't see the outcome yet. But I'm going to follow you in this. Isn't that extraordinary? Wow. Wow. I was debating whether I should read this and instead of just going into my straight my message before. I probably shouldn't have read this. But anyway, I think it's really helpful for us. And he is the head of the body of the church. He's the beginning of the firstborn from among the dead. So that in everything he might have supremacy, the lordship of Jesus Christ. Come on. He just doesn't want to be your savior. He wants to be your lord. I saved you from, but now you want to be my lord. That he's in control. Come on, today, right now, where you are, if he's not your Lord, why don't you just make that, that moment right now? Why don't you just say, God, I surrender to your Lordship. Okay. For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him. For God was pleased to have his fullness dwell in Jesus. Okay. And through him to reconcile to himself, reconcile, put back in right relationship. All right. Through him, through Jesus, to put back into right relationship to himself all things. So God's going, I am bringing you all back into relationship with me. That is crazy good. Oh, but Pastor Clint, you don't know. I just feel God so far. I don't know. I can hear him. I don't know if I feel him. I don't know. I get that. But that's not his word. So then when I take this word to the conversation or to the battle that says, oh, God hasn't spoken to you for ages. God hasn't done anything to you for however long. But no, he's brought me back into relationship with God. How does that look like for us? I don't know if I've got time to read. Ah, oh, you know, that prayer didn't get answered. Or there's this distraction in life. Or there's this fear that comes. Or there's this situation that we face. And every time it just pulls us out. Pulls us out of being planted with God. Pulls us out of what we know. Pulls us out of what we... And it just literally does. It just wants to destroy. Because if it's never planted, it never grows a bulb. It's just eaten. Or just dries, literally just dries and dies. But your faith, your belief in God is not based 
on hype or attending church. It is based on the Word of God. And when I say the Word of God, I'm not saying the Bible. God's Word to you. What is God saying to you? How's God doing that for you? That you're reconciled right into right relationship. What's that conversation that goes on? Maybe I'm not good enough. Oh, you don't know this in that. Oh, you don't. But can you bring that to him? Can you release that to him? Can you walk through it to get to him? We have, I have a relationship with my wife. And do I get everything right perfect? No. But it doesn't stop me having a relationship with her. Because it's not based on what we do for each other. It's based on that we love each other in spite of what we do sometimes. All right, we're going to end here. Uh, and through him, to re- this was meant to be about baptism. Please sign up for the baptism class. <laughs> no, I mean, for getting baptized. Seriously, I will personally talk you through the whole message that I actually had planned for you today. Uh, I summed it up already, but it's been a bit hidden. But through scripture, we understand that baptism is not only the repentance of sin. And this is the thing that was the real kicker for me. It's actually the freedom to walk in everything that he purchased us for. And you know what? In my baptism, it was only just about the forgiveness of sin. Uh, And baptism doesn't actually forgive your sin. Repentance does. And so as a result of repentance, we get baptized. I'm giving you the highlight reel right now. As, As of, because we recognize our need for God, that's our repentance. God, I'm walking this way. My, my, my way of thinking about you is down this way, but I'm turning and I'm going to now, instead of running from you and not believing you, I'm actually going to believe you now and walk into you. And then he's, God's whole MO is, hey, listen, repent, be baptized, and receive the Holy Spirit. But when we get baptized, we, that's literally our death sentence. That's our final day as who we know we are. And you know what? I don't know. Some of us are walking with dead bodies around. It's like dead men walking. So I got baptized because that's my thing to do. And my, all my stuff from my past still holds on to me. Because we never reckoned ourselves dead. We did a, a routine. We did a ritual. So please sign up. Even if you've been baptized before or christened. What I do feel is that we die to Christ, but my gosh, there's such resurrection life. And we are going to cut off every spiritual assignment, force, power, possession, oppression, because we die right there. God's literally going to deliver some people. But the second part of baptism, we're baptized in water, but we're baptized into repentance. We're baptized into relationship with God. And then when it comes to Jesus, the baptism of Jesus, we're baptized in water, but we're baptized into the Holy Spirit. It's interesting that God never came down at any other time for Jesus and said, oh, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased, until he got baptized. There's a release of the anointing of the Spirit of God over your life in that baptism. So if you've never been baptized, please, I will go through all the proper scriptures with you. Let me finish this last thing. Who's out? We don't have keys. Do we have keys today? Oh, Trist. Appreciate guys like Tristan. He's helping out one of the churches that hire our building on a Saturday night. Love seeing Tristan. He, Tristan's out with the whole on the street um, knock, door knock and our invitation. That was amazing. And I know Tristan. Tristan's not the guy. That's not Tristan's thing. Like, Tristan's like, oh. But Tristan's out there in the front line. Love that, Trist. All right. Whew. All right. Pete, can I get you, your, your team to come up?
Listen, folks, it took so long this morning, and I didn't get to preach to you. No, I'm just joking. But I just do really want to emphasize, and I feel that's what the Holy Spirit, with how Pete led us this morning, he just really wanted to emphasize that he's a God that's big enough for you to trust him with your life. There's going to be such freedom that's going to come into your life, such miracle signs and wonders. But it's not just about that. We just don't want his hand. I tell you, that Elton Riddle in the kids' church, so loud. So glad I'm not like that. It says, And through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through the blood, through his blood shed on the cross. If you have given your life to Jesus Christ, you are at peace with Him. Oh my gosh. You're good. It's good. And that just peace doesn't mean just a tranquil feeling. That means that I am in right relationship with Him. That means that the peace of God that passes all understanding that God, I'm going to spend the rest of my days, the rest of eternity with you. I'm good with you. But then that also just to have a good conscience with God. That we're not hiding. Yesterday on the street, uh, just in our area, a guy was doing a deal, a drug deal. And you know, they drove up in their car to the place. They get out. So here's Novi, Clint and Gabby walking down the road. So, you know, then they, they get to the fence and pretend like, oh, yeah, <laughs> they're having a, having a conversation. Every now and then having a look where we are. I'm just talking about the sheepishness sometimes, how we feel with God. I've fallen in this area. I've done this. I've said this. Or... I know this is not what I'm meant to be doing according to your word, but I'm, I'm going to do it, but I just, I'm going to be sheep. I'm going to hide. I'm going to hide from church. I'm going to hide from God. I'm going to hide from people that know and that can come to me and ask me about those things. I'm going to hide it. Because normally when we want to do something that's not the right thing, we normally do it in the place where we're actually hiding. And anyway, takes out his money, gives the money, the guys walk off into the house. And then Clint goes up to him and goes, hey, how you going? Just want to invite you to our church or to our dinners. Hey, you know that God actually has a great plan for your life. Don't need to do that. Don't need to be caught in this. Don't need to be sheepish with God. Don't need to be hiding. I can't pray because of you're brought into relationship with him. Can you trust him with the stuff that you're trying to get away with? Maybe he wants to bring freedom to your life and wholeness. So that's why you need to sign up for the baptism class. Well, it's not the baptism class, it's actually getting baptized. Listen to this, and this is what I'll finish on, on 11.30. Once you were alienated from God and you were enemies, in your minds. I love that. Once we were alienated from God and God hated us. No, in our minds we were alienated. In our minds we were enemies. It's never been His mind. For God so loved the world that He gave. No, no, Pastor, it's for God so loved the church. You know, to hell with the rest of everyone. No, no, no. For God so loved the world. Dealer, no dealer. User, no user. Whatever. Whatever the, the thing is that describes your history. Anyway, let's keep moving. Once you were alienated from God and were enemies in your minds because of your evil behavior. But now. Turn to your name and go, but now. No, 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 like, but now. But now he has reconciled. Reconciled is put back in right relationship, right? We know that. 
He's reconciled you by Christ's physical body through death to present you holy in His sight. What? What? I don't have to be sheepish. I don't have to be all ducking and diving. I don't have to try to get away with things. No, no, no. He's saying to you, hey, listen, you felt you were enemies with me. And while we hated God, while we hated Christ, while we had wanted nothing to do with Him, Christ died, the Bible says. He says, but listen to where you're positioned. But now He has reconciled you by Christ, physical body, through the death to present you holy in His sight, without blemish and free from accusation. Wow. If you continue in your faith, established and firm, not moved from the hope held out in the gospel, this is the gospel that you heard and that has been proclaimed to every creature under heaven and of which I, Paul, have become a servant. Awesome. There are people here today. I'm going to deal with this first and then we're going to ask for people that want to give their lives to Christ. There's this accusing voice in your head. This is accusing voice that keeps speaking to you all the time. Where your position through the blood and the death of Jesus' physical body and resurrection is that you are brought right into that place of holiness before God. And the enemy comes to accuse you every day that you're not good enough not worthy enough and this is the evidence that he has and he rattles through the evidence and then you go yeah well, that's yeah that's right that's right oh, so maybe I'm not good enough and it's kept you out but here's the thing so people being accused keeps them out but then what happens that becomes your nature you start accusing start finding fault Start putting down. Start doing that, saying that, making sure that people feel really rubbish about who they are. And we can actually hide behind our religion to do that. Father, right now, we break off every accusing voice. And if that's you and you feel like in you, you just see things really sort of in an accusing way, you don't see the issue. Jesus heals someone. Oh, but you did it on a Sunday. Oof. You did it on the Sabbath. Really? You're not meant to do it on the Sabbath. You don't see the healing. You see the religion. Stop. Turn around. Press into Him. That's what repentance is. Turn from that. It's not a prayer for deliverance. It's a prayer of repentance. Stop accusing. It's not who you are. It's not your Father. That's not your image. It's not where you are. It's not where you're positioned positioned in relationship with Him. And God is love. Oh, but that means everyone just goes and does. No, no, no. God's love. And it's His goodness that brings us to a place of repentance. We don't need to do God's job for Him. He'll do His own job. We can just be free to be in love with Him. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray of every mind and every heart that the enemy would accuse. And literally every day, you're not good enough. You're ugly. You're hopeless. Who would want you anyway? You're not as smart as, you're not as trendy as, you're not as skinny as, you're not as witty as, you're not whatever. Don't know as much about. Father, in the name of Jesus, whatever the accusation is, if that is you with no eyes looking, I just grab your heart, grab your hand, put it on your heart. And right there in this moment, Father, I release right now myself from that. And I think again, I repent, I change my way of thinking that I'll be a person that will speak love and life 
in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Every head bowed, every eye closed while we're still there. If you've never given your life to Christ and you know that today, listen, PC, I really would love to because I heard that everything that God has done for me, if that is you, just give, grab your right hand and place that on your heart right now. If that is you, great, awesome. Is other people doing it? Great. Yes, great. Anyone else? Thank you for doing that. Thank you for doing that. This is that moment for you right now. God, not all my stuff, just right now I'm placing, I'm giving my life to you. That is you. You want to join the group? So people that want to do that today, then this is your moment right now. Thank you. Last few seconds, God's waiting for you. He's going, come on, trust me with it. I got you. Anyone else? Thank you, Father. Here it is. I just, PC, I'm putting my hand on my heart because I'm giving it to him today. It's messy, it's ugly, it's gross. Doesn't matter, but he wants it today. Ah, feel that there. Just feel his love right now. Come on, there it is. Is your freedom there. Awesome. Come on, church, let's just pray this together. Heavenly Father, thank you today that I get into relationship with you <laughs> by receiving Jesus Christ as my Lord and as my Savior. Today I receive your love. Today I receive your forgiveness for all my sin. Today I receive the Spirit of God that I would live for you all days of my life. And today, God, I choose to be a, a child of God, and to come into the family of God through everything that Jesus Christ did for me. I say thank you, and today I step into that in Jesus' precious name. Amen, and amen, and amen, and amen. Come on, let's give God a great praise. So good. All right. Hey, listen, next week we're really excited. Sky will be preaching to us. It's a really great message on Abraham and faith. It's going to be really exciting. She might talk a bit about baptism. Huh? might give you my message. Hey, listen, God bless you. Why don't you stand to your feet? I think, you know what? I think we're actually really good to just like end right there. Sorry, guys. No, no, no. No, keep playing in the background. Just grab someone next to you and just bless them. Yes, I bless you. Bless you. Make sure that it's people that we don't know. Make sure we do it for them as well. Yeah. Church, have a great week. Tuesday night. Love Langford. Love to see you. Bless you.